analyzing primary sources. We're going to analyze primary sources today using AP parts as a guide to help us. So A is for author. Who created the source? What do you know about the author? P is for place and time. Where and when was the source produced? How might this affect the meaning of the source? P for prior knowledge. Beyond information about the author and the context of this creation, what do you know that would help you further understand primary sources? So prior knowledge is very, very important. And if, if you're reading about something and you have issues in it that you can't figure out what it is, you will need to do some other research to gain that primary knowledge. A is for audience. For whom was the source created and how might this affect the reliability of the source? So if I'm writing to my mother, I'm going to be pretty honest about stuff, um, unless I talk about how old she is and then I'm not going to be honest about that. Um, but if, if, I, if I am uh, writing to a friend, that writing is going to be different than if I was writing to my legislator, where that would be a real formal type of writing, where if I was writing to a friend, um, it, it might be something that like a text message or something, so it wouldn't be so formal. Uh, R is for reason. Why was the source produced and how might this affect the reliability of the source? They're kind of talking about fake news here. You know, if this is, uh, the, if the reason for it being produced is to get you to agree with them, uh, get, they have a biased opinion, and so they might not exactly tell the truth, and so that would definitely affect the reliability. T is for the main idea. What point is the source trying to convey? Now, it's not going to say the main idea is this, or this is the important thing. Um, so you have to, you know, read everything and then uh, look at everything that you know and, and say, you know, what what is this author trying to say to me? Or what is this author trying to convey? Which means the same as like say or understand for us to understand. Then um, the last is significance. Why is this source important? Ask yourself, so what? In relation to the question asked. So, so why, why was this important? And, and how is this going to help me understand what I'm researching? And we're going to read some letters. And these are letters um, about dogs. And they talk about, uh, the time period is like 1850 to 1905 or something like that. And, well, let's get started. Letter one. Uh, and this letter is from Hannah Ropes in Lawrence, Kansas Territory, not even state territory, November 1855 to her mother. So we know the author, we know the mother, we know the date, we know where it was at. Now, at the top of some of these, uh, now I got these out of a really nice book, and at the top of this page, you can they give you the main idea for it. And so, dogs serve as watch dogs, guarding homes to, uh, guarding homes, I, just, I can't read that. Oh, guarding homes. I think it says from critters and on the edge of the frontier, something like that. All right, so this is the letter. I do not think I have ever told you about a dog that came here quite on his own accord. Tiger came and joined himself to Alice. It seemed a genuine first love on both sides. Wherever she went, he followed, and at night laid himself down close to the cabin door of cloth and kept faithful watch till morning. No creature 
could come near without his giving the alarm in a deep and terrible growl. So first we look at this and uh, she's writing to her mother and we can assume that her mother, Alice's grandmother, is worried because they're out in the frontier. Um, and we can assume that this is a letter written to reassure her mother that they're okay because of Tiger and his guarding the home and, and the children and everything. Um, so let's think of some background knowledge. We know about the Kansas Territory and stuff, but some anyway. Um, there's one thing that you might need to Google. It says, the cabin door of cloth. What was a cabin door of cloth and why did they have it? Um, and also, what creatures was this dog growling at? Um, what was it that was so horrible that if it came in the house, the family would be in harm? So that dog wasn't going to let any of that happen or anything happen to any member of the family. All right, a memoir. A memoir is something that's written, a collection of letters, stories, things written down and put together. And this is Ellen McGowan Biddle's memoir of the frontier as a soldier's wife. And this, if you look down at the bottom, it says, you know, it was a book put together. And it says, Ellen McGowan Brittle's Reminences of a Soldier's, a soldier's Wife. And Philadelphia's, where it was published in, J.B. Lippincott Company, 1907. So it says, we used to make, we used to make hash for the two dogs, Beauty and Tip. Each had his and her own tin pan that it was cooked in. I saw Nick, the baby, lying flat on his little stomach. He was not two years old, and he and Tip were eating out of the same pan. So, we're looking at all this and we're thinking, what could the main idea be here? What is it that this author was trying to get across? Well, let's look at, obviously Tip is a really good dog because he's allowing a, a child not even two years old to eat his food. And um, that, you know, there was some type of a loving relationship. So what do you think the main idea would be? Now there's some background knowledge that you might need to know. First of all, where's the dog food? Why don't they just go out and get a cup of their dog food out of the bag? Why, why are they making hash for these dogs and what is hash? Well, the dog food, you might need to Google this, but they didn't have it back then, I'll just tell you right now. And so if you had a dog that you wanted to keep alive, you had to make their food or they had to eat scraps or they had to go out and hunt it themselves. Hash is like stuff that's mushed up. And, and, and hash you can make out of a corn, it's kind of a corn thing and you put it together and and it, it's real solid and then you can cut it in pieces, people eat it. Um, but she's making this probably, I'm assuming from my background knowledge, that she's taking all the scraps and cutting them up and making then their dog food for them. Letter three. And this, the main idea they've told you, dogs were companions to children as well as adults. And this is a letter from Elizabeth Blair Lee of Maryland to her husband who was serving in the Navy during the Civil War. So right now your, your brain's going and, and you're pulling up background knowledge from the Civil War and from the Navy. And you know, Navy has to do with boats on the ocean. And down below, um, it, looks, it tells you the information about where this came from. 
So, March the 20th, 1862. Captain Barton was given Blair, a huge Newfoundland dog, a noble animal. He seemed sorry to part with him, but he cannot carry him into Dixie with him. So, this is kind of background here. You know, he leaves on March 20th, and he loves this dog that somebody had given to him, but he can't take it with him. So he leaves it home with his family. April 4th, Blair's big dog follows them everywhere. And Becky says she feels as if he was able to take good care of the whole party. He evidently is nurse number two. So, several things you need to know, background knowledge. What's a Newfoundland dog? It obviously, it's big because it says a huge Newfoundland dog, a noble animal. Uh, so if you don't know, you'd have to Google that to see. And you might even want to, to see a picture of them. They're pretty cool looking. Uh, a Newfoundland dog is a big dog. They're over 100 pounds usually. They have long black hair. And from your background knowledge, you might remember that Lewis and Clark had a Newfoundland with them on their expedition. Uh, so this talks about then how the dog... Um, is um, protective, not only of the captain, but also of the children. All right, a diary. A diary is different because a diary is written very close to the time it happened. So diaries tend to be very um, trustworthy and, you know, People want to get those because it's it's a first-hand account close to the event that happened. Because diaries are written that day or, or, you know, within a week of when it happened. And this one is talking about the main idea being canine lo loyalty persists over many miles and often many years. And this is the diary of Ann Lewis Hard Hardman in Mississippi. Tuesday. July 19th, 1850. We had on Saturday last an illustration of the fidelity of the dog. James' dog arrived from Meadville by steam, which is railroad. After being separated over two years, he recognized James and Oscar, all three being in an ecstasy of joy. Now, I know a little bit of background knowledge of this, um, that the family had moved and they couldn't take the dog with them. And so the dog had stayed with um, Anne's parents. And they, it you know, took them two years to, to settle down enough so where they could actually have the dog. And so the dog was sent by railroad to them. Now, an assumption I would make would be Probably her parents had, you know, a little bit more money than most people because sending a dog by railroad just wasn't real common um, during that time period. So, primary source doctrines, when you analyze those, um, use the AP parts. And look at the author place and time, prior knowledge, the audience, the reason, the main idea, and the significance.